Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I wish you success in a difficult job. Uh, it's real important to our country, so thank you for taking this job. And I do have to bring up several difficult issues given this opportunity I have to talk with you. In audio tapes uncovered by the House Natural Resources Committee investigation on the stream buffer zone rule, the Office of Surface Mining's own career staff was highly critical of the proposed rule because its costs so significantly outweigh its benefits. In fact, they quote, quoted were, they were quoted saying, never sell, this will never sell to the public, Congress, or to anybody, that if we have this huge rule that we're only going to save, say, 15 miles of stream, this is going to be a headline story, unquote. Anyway, this committee has continued to request information from the department about this rule, and the department continues to withhold information to us for no apparent reason. Just yesterday, the department produced a series of documents claiming to be responsive to this oversight request, including emails from 2009 that were entirely redacted. Here's an example up on the screen. And it took the department five months to produce these emails, which are five years old. And I just am very disappointed about the department's lack of responsiveness. I know you've just gotten there, but do you, do you condone this lack of responsiveness, and, and will you tell them to be more responsive, hopefully? Congressman, I, as I said to the chairman, I'm, I'm committed to being responsive on requests and also working with this committee, hopefully outside of the need for requests, to understand what your concerns are and to address those concerns without doing it back and forth uh, uh, through FOIA requests. Um, I, I know that there are legal issues, there are individual names, there are things that uh, uh, are, are not appropriate to provide in written form. What we want to do is get to the bottom of issues that are of concern to this committee. And, and with regard to the stream buffer zone rule, I know that uh, the, the team is working diligently on coming up with uh, a way to both protect the resources and provide uh, clarity to the industry. So um, uh, we'll be publishing the rule once we've had all those inputs. And to the extent that uh, there's additional information that, that we can provide that's helpful, we'll be happy to do so. Well, I know there can be legitimate reasons for not disclosing certain isolated facts, but I, I hope that we don't see any cover-up just because things aren't going well and there's been some uh, poor management. That is certainly not my intent. Okay, thank you. Changing the subject, uh, last year's fire season burned a total of 9.3 million acres, including the Waldo Canyon fire in my district that destroyed 347 homes and killed two people. Also, this year, there's been the Black Forest fire in my district that claimed uh, two lives and destroyed about 500 homes. However, the administration's budget proposed cutting hazardous fuels reduction funding by 37 percent. That's $115 million uh, in a decrease. And at the same time, ironically, proposing to acquire more land and increasing that funding by 10%. So I question that we are buying more land when we're not managing the land we already have very, very well. In light of the catastrophic fire season, do you support the president's desire to reduce funding by $115 million for hazardous fuels reduction? Congressman, as I said in my opening statement, fire is a huge issue. I'm bringing awareness to uh, the administration. I'm working alongside Secretary Vilsack, trying to prioritize how we uh, do our work and spread the dollars as far as we can. Um, and I'm making the administration aware of those things. I think that as, as uh, my colleague Jim Douglas, I think this was before this committee, explaining some of our work around fire. Um, it is very important that we raise awareness as we make hard decisions around the budget. And uh, there have been many hard decisions made that uh, I think nobody is going to be happy with as we try and, um, and, and, and bring the budget uh, down. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, as I influence the first budget, I'll have an opportunity to be involved with, which is 2015. I'm certainly talking about these issues. Okay, thank you. And lastly, um, there's been some talk, in fact, the acting ranking member brought up the uh, proposed BLM rule on uh, fracking. The states are already doing a good job of that. And some, some people around here talk about science, and you're a, an engineer. So you know that the hydrology and geology of every state is not the same. I mean, Alaska is not the same as Hawaii, for instance. Why not let the states who know their own hydrology and geology better 
do their own regulation instead of a one-size-fits-all imposed fiat uh, bureaucratic mandate from Washington. Why not let the states do it? Do do what they're already doing a good job for. Mr. Chairman, can I just take a you, you 10 can. seconds to respond? Very, very briefly, thank okay, you. Okay, will do. Um, as an engineer, I understand fracking, and I understand that there are baseline standards that apply no matter the hydrology, well bore integrity, flow back fluids, <clears throat> and uh, what is in the, the fluids themselves. Colorado does a nice job, uh, Wyoming does a nice job. If the standards of the states meet or exceed the federal standards, we are fully supportive of state or tribal standards, but, but some states do not have regulations and technology is moving into those states. So we're talking about baseline minimum standards on federal lands. I thank the gentleman.